Hello everyone, my name is Mike Butcher, I'm editor at large for TechCrunch and based in London. Um, Startup studios, uh, as it were, differentiated themselves from uh, accelerators a few years ago by building startups around entrepreneurs as opposed to taking on fully formed teams. And um, possibly one of the best known, especially here in New York, is uh, Betaworks, which, which John founded. And we're sort of nine years into this, and Heather, you've now, uh, with your co-founders, have created uh, Human Ventures, and of course, Naveen, very well known from Foursquare, now with Expa uh, as an extension, a new, well, a new version of Expa here in New York from uh, Expa in San Francisco. The question is, is are we still in an experimental phase around the studio model, or do you think the whole thing's proven now? John, what do you think? Um, I think that it's, I, when I started Betaworks, the idea was to create a different kind of company, right? It's like all the innovation happens normally at the product level, and I wanted to see if you could innovate some at the company level. I think that that is still under construction. I mean, I think it is still, uh, it's still a work in progress. Uh, I think that the, you know, studios today, uh, there are, we were talking backstage, I think worldwide there are hundreds. Here in the States, it's a smaller number. I think studios are particularly well suited to new markets uh, where there isn't a, necessarily an infrastructure around technology, uh, that the studios can help form that hub and that ecosystem that can you know, sort of lay the groundwork for uh, a, a city to become a technology-centered city. I want, I want to unpack that thought um, in a minute, but Naveen, do you think Foursquare could have emerged from the studio model, as it were? Um, I, think it's, I think it's possible. I think, so from my perspective as an engineer, as a product designer, uh, I get excited about building really great tools and products and things that I want to use and that I want to see in the world. And I think what the studio enables is for me to try a lot of those things in parallel. Because you, know, you don't know which one's going to stick, which one users might respond to, uh, which ones really have legs to become something even bigger. And so there's no question in my mind, maybe something like Foursquare could have come out of it. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm hoping that you know, in the next couple of years, something like that comes out of Expert here in New York too. Uh, I mean, Heather, I mean, I do get this question all the time about like, what on earth do you do? Surely it's an accelerator. <laughs> Are you giving people a desk and a chair and you know, yeah. a, 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 yeah. another phone number or something? I mean, uh, how do you yeah. answer that question? Well, as far as being proven out, I think what has been proven is that to have a successful company, you have to have an ecosystem around it. Whether it's the, you know, the effect after a successful company, the PayPal mafia, the Uber mafia, it, it's a network that's been created, whether formal or not. And so I think the studio structure gives that ability of, um, of a really tight network of people who are going to help that company succeed from the very nascent stages, which, which is instrumental. It's, it's important uh, for any company, but in that beginning phase, it makes all the difference. Reserve is a startup that's emerged out of uh, this model and uh, made a new announcement recently, right? Um, uh, the uh, digital concierge for restaurants. Uh, do you think that sort of a thing is a one-off? Do you think that's that, uh, that, that uh, really quite well-known and successful companies are, are repeatable out of studios? Anyone? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll take that. I think each company is so unique and so different. So I think it's what's really important in these types of models is not to be too formulaic about how you're approaching a founder. I think each founder is extremely different. They have their skill set, their superpower. They have, um, you know, what they can bring to the table. And then the important part is surrounding them with team members who can really fill in the gaps. I mean, it, does it kind of replace a co-founder, Naveen? I mean, uh, do you, can you take single entrepreneurs and fashion them into, uh, in, you know, uh, into uh, I, I amazing think, I think what versions it does of yourself? Is, yeah, I think what it does is it provides uh, founders with a lot more support than they would have had perhaps by themselves. If you even think about a single company, what happens is you try a lot of different ideas out, even if you're just working on one thing. Uh, I think Snapchat, I heard once, might have gone through 40 different iterations or something like that. Maybe I'm wrong on the number, but it's, it's, it's a really large number. So the idea that even with one idea, you may have to try it, you may have to launch, you may have to test and iterate so many times and try a lot of different things before you find something as one idea is the same thing in a studio, except the studio allows you a little bit more kind of diversity in ideas, diversity in opinion, uh, a lot of staff who have a lot of experience, perhaps from 
you know, previous companies that they'd worked on, for instance. And it potentially puts you on a better path and a better track to becoming something successful. And I think it's, it's the same thing with more people behind you. How do you differentiate yourselves from each other? Do you, do you, feel, do you constantly refer to e each other's uh, organizations you know, in the same breadth, or, or do, you, do you feel you've all got different spins? John, what are you about you? I mean, I think that the, I, I think that the studios on the stage here, and the studios, if you look at them across, uh, across the world, uh, they're fairly different. And I, I mean, I would say in the case of Betaworks, we've, uh, we, we believe that going deep thematically is very important to us. And so, um, yes, you know, respecting the, uh, the uniqueness of an individual founder is important, like Heather said, but what's more important to us is being able to put a set of individuals who are doing something in a related space together. And so, uh, you know, right now we're doing a lot of work in the chatbot space. Um, in the early days of Betaworks, we did a lot of work in the sort of social, uh, social slash discovery space. And so we, we have a sort of thesis, an overarching thesis, which we're going after, which may run for a year, two years, three years. And all the companies that we are building at Betaworks, all the ones we're investing in will be around that thesis. And that to us is vitally important, having that. Uh, because what it does is that it gives a, we build an ecosystem around that particular thesis. And so whether it's um, making, starting a company like Bitly or making an investment in TweetDeck um, or making an investment in Tumblr, you know, all of those companies sort of are related and, and there's a lot of shared knowledge, sh yeah. shared um, infrastructure even. That you I, can apply I suppose across. that sort of times with what you guys might say. Heather, um, Human Ventures is a, a, a year old. Um, do you feel like you're the new kid on the block still? Do you, um, what kind of uh, companies are coming out of Human Ventures right now? And do you think you're going in a particular direction with the, the, the company or, or what? Yeah, I think, well, first, when I first started Human Ventures, John and Nivian were both completely instrumental, forthcoming, and very helpful. And I think what I love about this space is how collaborative it is, whether it's unique to New York or the startup studio environment. I mean, um, people on the Betaworks team, we've exchanged resumes back and forth. If we're hiring or we're not hiring, and there's good talent, we want to bring them all together. So I think there's very, very, um, there's room for collaboration. And Naveen and I have collaborated a lot um, with product and, and people. And so I, you know, I think that there's room for, there's room for this, there's need for this, and I think that's what's so exciting about why New York is you, um, excelling. We, we were talking about how it, it, there's something about the studio model that speaks very well to a city and to, in particular, to New York, you've got yeah. a lot of traditional industries. I mean, have you seen that people coming out of traditional industries into, into Absolutely. moving into yeah. your, um, John, you, what about you? Coming out of like uh, the financial services industries, and yeah, do, yeah. They, do they feel studios is a good place for them to land? Yeah, I think, the, look, if you look at the next 10 years of technology, uh, 10, 20 years of how technology is gonna impact our society, the majority of that impact is actually gonna happen outside of the confines of the, you know, the box that sits in front of you on your desk, or the laptop, or the mobile phone that you stare at most of the day. It's going to be the impact is going to be to the rest of the society, to the rest of the industrial components of society that are still um, sort of fairly divorced from a lot of technology. Fundamentally, you know, as as you think about everything from uh, the Internet of Things to uh, to AR, VR, MR, sort of that um, that kind of space, it's, it, it is. All of that impact is going to happen outside, and I think that um, I think that studios are effective uh, ways to approach innovation. I do think that studios. I mean, you asked me up front, do, do I think that the would would done or that we've proven the model? I mean, studios, in my mind, it, they're deeply personal. They're grounded in the individuals who have created them, and they are. You know, the works of, um, you know, I, I love all the companies that we're building in Betaworks, and I assume that Naveen, Heather, you do too. These are, these are things we're creating. We're co-founders in this process. Mm. Yeah. So I consider it always a process, right? And I consider it always on the reconstruction. I mean, we have a set of awesome hits at Betaworks, but I don't consider that done and dusted. I consider it like, it's what's next? What are Iterating. we doing next? How can we link those things to the previous things? How can we find 
opportunities are the next because you know fundamentally what I wanted to do as an entrepreneur was build a platform to be able to do repeat entrepreneurship just to right. build stuff the vein uh, for um, a while with um, with, with Expa, I mean you've got a hundred and fifty dollars a million dollars to play with I mean what's the difference between you and a, a normal <coughs> fund well um, it goes back to something I was saying earlier I I think the, the story I always love saying is, if you were to leave me alone in a room without anybody else and I didn't have a job, what I would, as a designer, as kind of like an engineer, somebody that likes to build, I would just start hacking away and building stuff if I was by myself. And I think for me, as John mentioned earlier, the studio means something to each one of us. And to me, it's basically an extension of what I would normally do, but with more resources and other people to bounce ideas off of and an environment and money to try things, see if they work, try other ideas if they do not, uh, and really double down and invest on the things that are working. So the difference, I would say, is that I don't think of us as just investing in things. What we want to create, all of us uh, on the team, we fashion ourselves builders, and the studio allows us to do that. Why did you personally decide to do this instead of jumping back into being an entrepreneur and starting a new thing? Uh, why did you move, make this move yourself? I get excited about just getting great ideas out. I get excited about the early stages of products, um, building the early team, you know, kind of setting the vision, thinking about um, you know, user research and thinking about like where it fits in the market and so on. And for me, I just wanted to go and do something that kept that part of my mind a little bit active. And I think second, it allows me to diversify because I don't know what the next good idea is. So why not try a few different things? Why not try uh, a few different things in a few different areas? Because this way, and not only am I learn something from a domain that I don't know anything about, but maybe I might be able to bring my skills and look at it differently and like spin the problem around in different ways. So that's why I get excited about it right now. So as opposed to one idea, I'm thinking, I don't know what's out there. I don't know what everyone in the audience here is going to like. Let me get excited about things and then see where they go. I, I mean, this is a, a wonderful Walt Disney view of the, of, of the world, but uh, I'm sorry to be the cynical British yeah. evil. Sure. Pl pl played the part of the evil baddie in the movie. but the, Surely, uh, Heather, the, this collaborative environment of which you speak, um, at the end of the day, deals have to be done. Yeah. Uh, there have to be investments. There have to be decisions made. Um, you know, sometimes things don't work out. And uh, this collaborative environment that you speak of, <coughs> yeah. you know, you know where's the, where's the, where is the chinks in the armor? Well, where's the it, downside? I mean, people say, what, 80 to 90 percent of startups fail. And in my mind, that's just Un, it, it's unacceptable. Like something's wrong in the ecosystem. Either things are getting funded that shouldn't be funded, uh, people are starting companies that shouldn't be starting, or they don't have enough support in the beginning. And so I think the only way to see success in early stage companies is that collaboration, whether it's with other CEOs that are in the studio, it's with other industry experts who are amongst you know, your, um, your peer group, uh, it's collaborating um, in an ecosystem like New York, which isn't as developed as Silicon Valley in some regards. But in some regards, we have incredible talent that just needs to be able to kind of take that leap and bridge, we can bridge that gap into the startup ecosystem and make that stronger. Isn't there a fundamental flaw in the model, though, that uh, you tend to uh, only take on first-time entrepreneurs, you know, very early-stage entrepreneurs, all those really, really amazing serial entrepreneurs, as you said, you know, the, the PayPal Mafia kind of yeah. entrepreneurs, they're not going to kind of work with you guys, That's right? not true. You're starting to see that. You're starting to see that they say, what's my probability of success? I think early on, I, worked, I asked some of those founders, what would make you co-found with something like, like a startup studio? It's speed, it's access to good talent in the beginning, and it's access to funding in the beginning, and it's, it's collaboration, having other people to bounce ideas off of. Look, Naveen's, Naveen's early, uh, second time, third time founder, you're very successful, and you've seen this model as something that you'd like to be working in. And I think also if you get it right the first time, you tend to come back and try it out, do it all over again. I remember even setting up Expo and, and doing all this stuff, we actually went to talk to a lot of other startup studios that we really admired and respected, and one of them that we talked to was this uh, company called Idea Lab, but John knows it very well, run by a very famous guy called Bill Gross. I think he's been around since 1995 or 1996, been doing this for a long time. Uh, and that's one of the things he said. People that have gone through the system either successfully or unsuccessfully with their ideas tend to come back because they, they respect and recognize the value that it provided in the first place. With the um, perceived slowdown in the economy, the IPO window um, being shut at the moment, um, John, do you think that uh, uh, that your models will be affected in the same way? Uh, are the people getting a bit gun-shy about starting up now 
um, in your, your experience, or do you, do you still see a lot of incoming? I mean, I think that the, um, the you know, what you're calling the slowdown, you know, we saw about a year ago, probably last April, March, April of 2015, we saw prices at the seed stage start to come down a bit and uh, to their sort of 2014 levels. And so I think at the early stage, we ha haven't seen much shift beyond that. I mean, there's definitely fewer deals that were done in, let's say, um, the November, December, January kind of window. But, you know, uh, I think yesterday you had on stage Alex Chung from Giphy, and the Giphy guys raised 52 million in January, which for a lot of people was, you know, sort of a very slow time. And uh, so there's a, the, I, I think at the earlier stage of the, uh, of the, of the development process, the, um, the surplus of capital, the overpricing of deals that's clearly been happening at the late, late stage hasn't, hasn't affected so much. Now, so there's still a lot of innovation coming through. Right. Um, I, I, think, I think also just because the market is turning and you know, people are freaking out doesn't mean we have fewer ideas. You know, it's going to be the same number of ideas. People aren't going to run out of ideas just because the market is telling them to, or something like this. Yeah. If anything, with less money or you know, fear in the market or anything, people might actually come together and want to work together more than they did before. They collaborate more. They collaborate more. Yeah. It's kind of like they'll like, it's like forming a super group or something. Right? Perhaps. Yeah. Uh, I mean, with constraint comes probably even more creativity, and I think the same is same is true in art, and I think same perhaps is true here. Just quickly, the, the closing seconds of this panel, uh, what does the next year look like for your, uh, your organization? Naveen, starting with you. Um, so one of the things that we want to do is Expo starts the early ideas. We test ideas out in the market. Uh, we test the product design. We iterate on it. We put the early team together. We come up with the thesis and all this other stuff. But the idea doesn't leave the space until it actually has a single leader. And so the next year is about appointing these types of leaders, assigning CEOs, and promoting people from within at each one of these companies. They're so really ramping up, head up. Ra ramping up, yeah. Well, we, since we haven't launched any of our companies yet, this next year you'll start to see some of the companies come out, and you'll start to see, I think, our, this idea of collaboration capital, as you've been talking about, really come to fruition. John? So we have, um, we have Bot Camp, which is launching this summer. Um, we announced this about two months ago. We're bringing in 10 companies. Uh, who are going to be going through a 10-week program in the bot space, again, thematically very focused. And so right now, so notifications, bots, chat bots, not robots. Um, we did have somebody who called the office and said that they wanted to send their 10-year-old child to bot camp for the <laughs> summer program. Um, so this is, uh, this is all chat bots, uh, is sort of where the focus is now. And um, you know, a lot of new stuff coming out of that space. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, John, Heather, and Naveen, for joining us here at TechCrunch Disrupt New York. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you <laughs>